Alright, so what I'm going to do here today is uh, replace the original uh, switch in this Epiphone Les Paul with a Switchcraft switch. Uh, the original switch has been cutting out about every six months or so and I fix it and it basically cuts out again, always at a bad time. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by removing this uh, switch uh, panel here on the back of the guitar. It's a number one Phillips. All right, next I need to flip it over and remove the nut that's holding the switch into the face of the guitar. Okay, I have the neck propped up here too so that the uh, Guitar's not laying on its face. All right, so what I'm going to do now um, is I'm actually going to remove uh, the panel that hides the volume knobs and so forth, just so I can show you where these wires go. Um, I know where they go. I've already checked it out and everything. So, but that way I can kind of explain where the wires go. All right, let me, let's remove that one next. Alright, so on the original switch you can see that I have uh, two different wires running to it essentially. One with gray shielding, one with white shielding. Uh, the gray is a, is a, a strand of wire and a ground. And then the, uh, the one with white shielding uh, has two wires and a ground. So um, you can see on this one the ground is here and then you've got three different uh, legs. Um, so we'll take a look at the switch craft here in a minute. But at first I want to go back and show you where these go on the other side of the guitar. All right, so you can see the wire here with the gray shielding. That one uh, had the single strand running to the center leg and a ground, and that goes directly to the output jack of the guitar. Okay, the other white wire with two strands and a ground basically runs to each uh, tone and volume pot setup. So that would be each humbucker. Um, so what I'm gonna do is come back to the switch. We'll, we'll remove it, and I'll kind of show you how it works. All right, so both switches work pretty much the same but what happens with the uh, the original Epiphone switch and other lower end switches I guess you'd say for lower end guitars uh, over time what has, ends up happening is the spring steel uh, you know basically loses some of its springiness and also you get a little bit of um, corrosion and uh, crud that uh, basically make a poor connection so what you can do is is basically take your switch and in the center you've got the uh, you've got two spring tabs that these each of these make connection with. You can bend those out just a hair because you can see the way that it works. When I put the switch in this position, it's breaking the connection between this piece and the piece that's on the inside. And likewise, when I put it in this position, it's breaking the connection. Okay, so on the output jack, if you remember. This center wire here goes to the to the gray uh, wire set, I guess you'd say. It goes right to the output jack. That's a hot output, uh, and then you've got a ground. Basically, in this position, it's obviously both humbuckers. And what the switch does is it basically breaks the connection uh, between one of the humbuckers, depending on which position it's in. Okay. So the switchcraft is a little bit uh, different um, in in its setup. I basically need to hook these two legs together so that it will emulate the original switch. So let me go ahead and get this one removed. Okay, so basically I'm just going to touch my soldering iron to each leg and gently pull on the wires. I could cut these wires. I have plenty of slack. Um, I could just cut them and strip them back a little bit, but
And obviously you want to try not to drop any solder on the uh, guitar. I may end up cutting this ground. Oh, there we go. Okay, so maybe you can get a better look at the switch here in the way that it works. Uh, if I can bring it up close. So in that position, each of those spring steel uh, tabs is connecting to its corresponding tab. And when you bring the switch out, it breaks a connection. If we go the other way, it breaks that connection. Well, what ends up happening is, uh, if you, for for example, if your switch isn't working, you took your fingers and went like that and pushed in, uh, it would probably work. If you take some contact cleaner and a little bit of uh, uh, sandpaper or something, and you can scratch that down and actually clean those up, and uh, it works for a while. But again, now it seems to be happening more often. It's been about six months and it happened again. So let's go ahead and get the new one soldered in. Alright, so what I've done is I've actually stripped back the shielding on each wire to give myself a little bit more room to work, as well as the overall shielding, just so I could uh, get that ground wire wire out and get that big uh, gob of solder off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that ground wire through first here. And you might need to flatten it out with some needle nose or something. And I'm just going to pull it in all the way. And the reason why is because I want to solder it up relatively close because I don't want that ground... Uh, and I'll cut the excess off. I don't want that ground to hit any of these legs. So I'm going to come up from underneath with it. Like that. And pull that out. And I'll solder it just like that. Okay, let me get my solder and iron here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is actually put a screwdriver in this hole because uh, the wires keep pulling the switch out of my way. And I want to be able to get this on camera for you a little bit. I had to let my solder and iron heat up again. Alright, so I'm just going to basically touch the uh, leg. Make sure you got solder on the wire and the leg. Kind of move it around a little bit. Try not to drip any on your guitar finish. I'm going to flip it over here. get a little bit on this side you don't need much but on the ground I'm putting a little more because it is two wires and it's kind of bulky all right, so now I need to uh, get the other wires in place and then we'll solder those up. I'm just going to go ahead and put all the wires in place. So let me move the screwdriver and reposition the camera. Okay, so the hot wire to the jack goes to both of the legs in the center. Um, and remember on my other switch, this was one leg. But on this one there, there are two. I'm just going to squeeze them together a little bit. my wire and I'll wrap it around and twist it and then when I solder it I'll make sure that I I get both sides so you have a good connection for both pickups okay so then uh, it it really doesn't matter which wire goes where because you can just spin the spin the switch around in the hole uh, and this guitar I'm believing that the red wire is my neck pickup, but I'd have to double check that. And I'm just going to go through each hole, spin it around, and I can cut any excess off. And we'll go on the other leg with the other white coming out of the white wire. These Epiphones don't have nice braided wire, but you can see my Seymour Duncan pickups did come with nice wire. Okay. 
All right, let's uh, solder it up. Okay, I'm gonna do this side while it's on this. Right, it's on this side of the switch. What I do when I get done is I'll just give each wire a nice little tug and make sure they're all secure. Okay, I'm just going to flip this over. I'm going to use my screwdriver technique again here because it does move and that helps keep from pulling away when you try to hit it with a soldering iron. I'm going to hit the side again. Just make sure I have both legs on this white wire here, this jack wire. And I'm going to hit this one. Alright, so I'm just going to give each wire a nice wiggle. Make sure that they're all secure. I'm also going to take a quick look at this ground wire. Make sure it's not touching anything. Everything looks like it's in good shape. All you need to do now is put this back in the uh, hole. Put the back plates back on and everything. Test it all up. Make sure I have my, uh, my lead, my rhythm where I want them. Uh, and then we're done. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you're replacing the switch uh, on your Epiphone, Les Paul, or guitar in general, uh, leave questions and comments below. And if you want to see more of this type of stuff, hit that subscribe button. And uh, as always, appreciate those thumbs ups. Thanks for watching.